So, mm -hmm. so he clings to John the second he sees him because he knows who he is. Mm -hmm. He knows him as Money Boy's Sparrow. Mm -hmm. is his higher nickname. Okay. Character and uh, and then there's Kyrie and Henry. Uh, they're both fathers at the church. They're like a comedy duo kind. Of. They never agree on anything, but they're best friends. They're always together. Mm -hmm. And they always have like certain things come up that John has to either deal with or fix. It gives him uh, more work to do. Oh, any examples? Uh, about things he has to fix. Things he has to. For between those two. Yeah. Like they'll have just like arguments about the same sex. Marriage. Wait a minute. Yeah. It's the 1800s. This is a comedy, I'll say. I'll say this is a comedy. <laughs> Here's how the deal with the same sex marriage in the 1800s. I know, they, they you put them in a box and you throw it in the ocean. <laughs> and, uh, but Henry, he's, he's kind of a left side of uh, a priest with it that's possible. Okay. And Hiram is. Well, the priest of all of them do that same sex. Yeah. It's always Did you tape that? <laughs> it's always been a big thing. And there's a uh, nun Gretchen, she's the head nun. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's... Mother like, Superior, you say? She's ah. strict and like proper, but but uh, John's always like joking around with her. and Like she pretends she doesn't like it, but really she does like it. And she, she indulges his yeah. youthful hoo-ha. All right. And uh, Al is like the head priest of the uh, school. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he tries so hard to become a bishop, which is like a step higher than a priest. The community getting, oh, yeah. getting up there. And oh, then, uh, yeah. But he's, they never really want him to. He's kind of a jackass. All right. And, uh, so what's an example of how all of these characters uh, interact? Like, uh, in other words, I'm asking you, like, in the first episode, what do we see? Uh, the first episode is the first day John gets to the school. Mm -hmm. You don't really know who he is or anything. But it, like the, there's a buzz around the school. Like he's like this great priest. He's been uh, given to him by some like higher ranked. But uh, really, he ends up giving a speech the first day. That someone really knows it. He really has like a speech that degrades basically everything where it's not Oh, okay. So it gives like a very, stuff. very critical sermon yeah. of the town. He's not, he's not, you know, he just, most of the stuff he says, like, a, like the Bible and stuff, is like, it's like a fabrication. It's not really like he's lying. He just doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, okay. Or he's so comedic there, too. Okay, sure. And, uh, so, of course, Al, he wants to get rid of this guy because he's, he's different, he's weird, he's got a big beard. He's a big guy. It's like a uh, rash peep in the mouth. He's got a peg leg. And a nice. A big guy coming down here. Oh, a fire oh, That's he great. He looks like a big fat guy, but really, pretty good there. Most boys. Aw. Uh, and this is the priest you're talking about. Ah. Uh, former pipe. Former pipe. Yeah, that's great. All right. That's, that's why I mean, his father is a pope and his mother's a pirate captain, so he's got a little good, a little bad in him. This whole concept is freaking insane, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, let's hope so. But, I, but you're still. Here's the thing. Uh, okay, so he comes to the town. He gives us a very critical speech that proves that he doesn't really know what he's talking about, religiously speaking. But people don't really see that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But Al. Yeah. So Al wants to get him kicked out. He tries to, but. Everywhere he goes, they're saying he can't do it, he can't do it. Well, what kind of efforts are he, he, is he making? Is he just trash-hocking him around the town? Is it? Well, first he tries going to the bishops and the higher ranks to like, find out why they send him there and who he is, but they won't tell him, they won't give any details. And they say like if he keeps trying, to, like he'll never become a bishop. So, okay. so now he's starting to always, always try to make him look I'll terrible. play along. Yeah, oh, okay. try to make him look terrible all the time. So, uh, so of course, there's the main bad guy, Al. Mm -hmm. All right. Is he a pretty one-dimensional bad guy? As these things go, no redeeming qualities, which I'm not necessarily in favor of. But as long as you know what they are. His uh, redeeming qualities, yes, he's always trying to get higher. He wants to be a bishop. He has ambitions. He's trying to get promoted. Yeah, but uh, really, he's just a job. Now I'm, I'm curious, and I, I, I don't think it's going to work well for your uh, for your pitch, but something like this, which you know, okay, it, it sounds very much like Blackadder. I don't know if you ever heard of that series, Rowan Atkinson, uh, 1990s, I think. 
Uh, it took place in different historical periods. Uh, big comedy, lots of uh, sort of historical character reference. But it was episodic. Like, it self-contained, storylines didn't cross over. You have yours down as serialized, and I'm curious why you want to sort of embark on that. Because it cuts down on the ability of the network to say, I want to package a five of your shows and just throw it in, you know. I mean, like, I think the first se uh, season should be serialized, so you understand completely the series. And after that, you could have an episode, but with like serial kind of like going on behind the. Uh, I say do what you want to do, but ignore my advice at your own peril. I think serializing is a mistake. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, like, the, the, you know, the only thing that's really serializing is that he wants to gain uh, respect from everyone at the church and the school. So, like, he's constantly trying to do something for the Lord. Now, why the pirate aspect? How does that come into play in the storyline? Does his pirate uh, yeah. talents ever be required for yes. anything, or, uh, most episodes, or is it just a conceit of most having Most episodes like, will have flashbacks of how he or his mother dealt with a problem that is coming up. In really? The, in the That's kind of neat. Okay. So he's he's using whatever like happened that. Sounds like a lot of beheading. In uh, in the present day, uh, like, the same All right. the church aspect, a lot of times was brutal, but sometimes he gets it through and it all works. All right. And, uh, also, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when he was a pirate, he never, I don't know, 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 he it's like a series, a series. Sure. Like, like to be continued type thing. Last episode of the season, you mean? Uh, two, yes, last two. Of the season? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what happens is uh, his favorite, like uh, the pirate he would have up to, is some reason in town, and he gives him a place to stay in the church. But really, this guy has a plan to uh, kidnap all the priests mm -hmm. and uh, put them on the front of his boat. So when he goes into uh, uh, some town he's going to, he's going to like rob the town if they can't shoot at them. Because mm -hmm. of course there's a few, and they have some, that's like the gods and the people. <coughs> Which this is actually, is actually happened the, uh, in the 1700s. What? A, a pirate kidnapped priest okay. and shielded his boat with him. Oh, well, that's, that's just good advice. <laughs> but, um, okay, here's the problem that, that the main problem that I think you should address, and it's not the serialized episodic, uh, is with the title and with the premise, it becomes hard to envision the show because it's kind of so out there on a lot of levels that in order to envision the show, you know, I, I start thinking, okay, pirates, I'm thinking pirates, I'm thinking crazy, I'm, what's the Pope doing? When the fact of the matter is, when we turn on this show, what we see is a small town, which you better name soon, even if it's yeah. just a gag name, no place. Probably a maritime village would yeah. be best, you know, somewhere in New Brunswick or PEI, yeah. Um, when we turn on the show, that's the town we're going to go to yeah. in our minds on the television screen. Absolutely. So, uh, your jo this, the jumping off point for your story has to be there. You know, so it's like, Treasures of the Trinity is a half-hour uh, live-action comedy series that takes a, a jaundiced view of uh, history. Uh, it opens in the name of a small town, a small town in the Maritimes, where a new priest has arrived, right? And uh, uh, his name is such and such, and people start to notice unusual and strange things about this character. But bring us into that town, because that town is what houses uh, these characters you talked about. Then let the, let the background come out a little later on. Let the background about... Uh, later in the series will be revealed that uh, such and such is a uh, former pirate, and not only that, but the bastard son of a pope. Uh, that he is a... Because it's sort of like you're giving the big ticket items too early. And without the context, the big ticket items don't make any sense to me. You know, Whereas if we create... Uh, the characters and the characters in that little village, we have a better sense that this is an ensemble comedy piece. Uh, these are all characters, and they're working together. Uh, this is the and they're 
all suspicious of this new priest with a peg leg, which is a, it is a curious thing. I'd be curious to see what happens. Um, so does that sound like something you could address? Yeah. Okay. Address that. Address that. Get me into that town. Name it. Um, and and then let the story fall from how everyone deals with the new priest in town. There's a new priest in town, and he wants to talk to you. And, and, you, and you, you, you. Sounds like, you see, that's a great theme song. You remember the days when sitcoms had theme songs, and it was all like, we explained the premise, right? There. There's a new priest in town, or, you know, uh, All in the Family. Oh, it was All in the Family. Oh, well, that was just another song they played. That wasn't a good one. The old man don't approve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there used to be a period where Gilligan's Island explained the whole premise of the show, right in that stupid little ditty there. Three hour tour. Three days. And they had to do that because they hadn't gotten the rights. They were they originally had Rock Around the Clock or something, and then they didn't want to pay the rights for that every episode. So let's write our own theme song. We'll own it. Then we'll have the money. Good idea. Gary Marshall, by the way, great book. Uh, by, he has an autobiography where he just gives so much good writer advice for comics like writing comedy for television, and uh, one of them is, yeah, uh, at 8 o'clock, when you have a deadline the next day, 8 o'clock, and you have a joke, it's usually not very funny. But at midnight on that same night, that same joke seems really funny. <laughs> because you want to meet your deadline so friggin' bad. <laughs> okay, that's it. Anyways, uh, that's my advice. Sorry for holding you up at the end there. Thank you very much. Uh, now, move along, please. Be gone. Oh wait, I got this other show. No, no. I got this I'm, movie about I'm it's calling a cat, you. Right? Uh, okay, I'll call it. Hey man, that priest show. We got money from the Vatican. I just dropped three tabs of acid. It sounds great. Yeah, it's midnight and it sounds hilarious. It's hot. Are you uncomfortable with this? I'm not. Uh, One hour dramatic anthology. Yes. Okay. Um. Perfect. Because their characters do recur. Yeah. Uh, okay, so how about uh, it is a one hour anthology series with some episodic elements? Would that sound right? Because there are recurring characters. Just say recurring characters? Maybe just say recurring characters? Yeah. Yeah, because it's a one hour, antholo one hour anthology series, but in the I would, the, I would go the other way and probably describe it as episodic with the main story changing characters every time. Or describe it from the per point of view of the main character. Mm -hmm. It's a hard I call. Because this is why just, we're just working on the log line here, though. Mm -hmm. eh? This is just the log line, but um, I want to do justice by it because, right. I mean, it is an anthology series a la Rod Serling, except that it occurs in a static environment that occurs every week. So it's always in the ward. And the ward is always a jumping off point. Well, then I would possibly just describe how it's an, instead of saying an anthology with episodic elements, I would actually just describe how it's an anthology. An anthology is set in a hospital with the story is focusing on the rotating characters in the hospital. Yeah? It, it's a little longer, but. Because, I mean, I don't think we deal with the same patient twice. There's one patient that recurs oh, throughout okay. the series, but in every episode, maybe he'll be mentioned or. Hmm. You'll have more than one episode on him. The doctor is the same? Yeah, the doctor is the same. Doctor is the same, nurses are the same. Okay. Well, let's, uh, I mean, let's stick with anthology for now. Uh, it, that occurs in a... I'm trying to get this right. I'm so sorry. Uh, a recurring... Of an anthology with recurring characters. Yeah, an anthology with recurring characters. How about that? Or we'll, 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 there may be other smaller characters, but it's only the doctor who's the real character. I know, but I, I don't want to call him a lead character because he doesn't necessarily become a player in her story. Um, I was going to say with only the doctor who treats the patients as the recurring character. Hmm. That sounds close. I like that. Okay, an anthology series with uh, some recurring characters like the doctor who treats the patients. Uh, there's something in there, you know? <laughs> we're, we're near there. Let's not get mired down in that. Okay. Because otherwise it was a brilliant opening for a pitch. It was textbook. Anyways, thank you. So, wow, that's great. I can't wait to hear about it. 
Well, it was set in the early 1950s. The word uh, centers around an isolated uh, mental institution where unique patients are sent to kind of disappear from society and be cast away. Um, it's based on the real life um, waiver mental institution in Saskatchewan sure. that was um, opened in 1921 and housed over. 2,500 patients. Um, it was known for using techniques such as um, bottom age shock therapy and LSD, and it was um, eventually closed in, in the 1970s. Okay. Um, and then we do Dr. Hockey, <coughs> the main character mm -hmm. in the series. Um, he's Great the resident psycho psychiatrist at the hospital, and he acts as narrator uh, as well as the main character. Um, and then I guess I'm going to start describing patients. Um, well, let's uh, let's hold on there. Okay, so um, you've described the hospital, you've described the character, and uh, now, I mean, the meat, if you will, is going to be sort of how we communicate the tone of the story that will be dealt with. Um, each episode will focus on a particular residence mm -hmm. and tell the story of um, how they ended up at the hospital. Um, some episodes will, will be based on notable stories from the past. Others will be complete works of fiction. Right. The stories will vary in genre from horror to sci-fi to mystery um, and deal with such things as supernatural. Um, I'm dying for an example story. Like I'm dying for a sample story at this point. Just a, a few sentences about, for example, uh, Mr. Blank, he has uh, been a resident uh, for such and such years. Um, it, 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 I'm going to sound a bit X Files pitching this, but it, it's a, and uh, he can't be he can't be imprisoned in anything. Somehow, he, whether and they don't know why, but whether he's in a straitjacket or or braces or locked in a room, he always seems to be able to find his way out. And for some reason, when he gets out, he always goes to some same spot that we you don't have to explain the significance, but but that same spot has some. Just, big significance that is paid off at the end of the story. Um, or, and, and in those few sentences, if you could get three little things like that, that's what this needs, is a suggestion of three stories that sort of make, oh, okay, this is cool. And now we're getting into the, that whole thing I say about, uh, what would TV Guide say? You know, how would TV Guide say? Uh, okay, wow, well, it's a guy who can, uh, can start, he's, he's pyro, pyrokinetic. He can start fires anywhere, uh, from from starting a fire in the hospital that has all the patients being evacuated to to uh, you know finding enough uh, tobacco remnants and outside to make a cigarette which he can then light, you know, without having light. like uh, or the the next character storyline or the next and like if you had three of those. That's what this needs, because then everything else is really good, really solid. Um, I mean, that anthology slash recurring thing is a tweak. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll we'll figure that out. You know, I'm still not sure. I know what I want for it, but three sample, three samples, synopsis of like a couple of lines each would just be the the icing on the cake for this. Um, and for the episodes, do you want to have like a full page? The first episode, full page for the first episode would be good just because you're, that's really the immersive one. That's the one that's uh, making people, okay, I'm really embracing this world of yours now here. And then once they've done that, okay, two or three more episodes, one paragraph each. They've already got the basic data from that first page. Okay. But, I mean, that's not even, you like, I mean, that's for your end of year pitch document. Uh, for, the, for the Toronto trip, it'd be nice if we were ahead of the game on it, but we really only need the one pager for that. So... When I'm pitching at the Toronto trip, would I go into the entire first episode, or just kind of? They might ask you about it. Okay. Like it's it's hard to it's hard to judge because you're you can't really talk about absolutes when you're talking about what they will ask you. Okay. Wait, Matthew. I'm looking so forward to your idea that I have to go out and have a smoke. This. <laughs> How many left uh, will we get to? I don't know if we'll get to everyone. Loatu. What a great. Frightening business card. That's not a business card. It's not a card. It's a logo. Uh, that's true. It's a logo. Loatu. Now, what does that stand for? Is that an acronym? Yes. I'm trying to think. What does, what does Loatu stand for?